Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalinati. Today I'm going to be revisiting some older anticipated book releases. Once a quarter I do an anticipated releases list and then about a year later I'm supposed to come back and let you know um, if I've read them and if so what I thought about them and such. I'm a little bit behind now. The batch of books that I'm going to talk about today came out two years ago. I'm still trying to catch up on these, but it is an interesting batch. Um, these are things from April, May, and June of 2019, and we've got pretty much everything. Things that I loved, things that I feel very meh about, books that I DNF'd, books that I skipped, etc. So let's get into this. So first up on this list, the April releases, we have Amnesty by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is the third and final book in the Amberlo Dossier series. I loved the first book, Amberlo, which I read four years ago now, I think. Um, I own the second book, Armistice, and I still haven't read it, which means I still haven't read Amnesty. I'm a little bit on the fence about whether I will actually finish this series, just mainly because it's been so long since I read the first book and it just has never been high priority enough for me to, to get around to reading them. But I own book two and I would like to try reading that and at that point I will decide whether I want to finish the series or not. I'm sure that this book is very good um, and I'm looking forward to new things from this author as well, but sometimes things just aren't always a priority for forever. Then we go from that book to one of my favorite books of the year, Atlas Alone by Emma Newman. This is the fourth Planetfall novel. This is a science fiction series that I totally love. I adored this book. I think I did a separate review for it as well, so I will link that if you want more thoughts. It has been about two years since I've read it, so... Um, one of my favorite books in the series is After Atlas and Atlas alone brings back one of my favorite characters in the series. He's more of a secondary character rather than a POV one, but I, I enjoy the series, the premise, the technology, the plot so much. Uh, so this was a great one. I do recall it being different from the others um, that I read because the main character was a little bit difficult to get into. Um, I didn't love her as a person, but I did get very emotionally invested in what was happening to her. And I will probably always remember this book for having a final paragraph that just punched me in the gut. <laughs> it was a good one. Another fantastic book is Exhalation by Ted Chang. This is his second collection of stories. Ted Chang mainly writes at the novelette and novella length, so a lot of these are longer short fiction pieces. This is another one that I did an entire review of where I talked about every single story in it at length, so once again I will link that if you want to check it out. I really adored this and there were some definite standout stories in it, both ones that I I was rereading as well as ones that were completely new to me. It was it was wonderful. Um, I don't think anything can live up to his first collection for me because I have such intense feelings about stories of your life, but his work is always so so good. <laughs> Next up there is The Buying of Lot 37 and Who's a Good Boy by uh, Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. These are the third and fourth volumes of the Welcome to Night Vale podcast episode scripts. There's a lot more in here than just the, the podcast scripts though. Um, there are introductions for every single episode. There are really wonderful illustrations. It's just, these are fantastic collections. I am a huge fan of the earlier days of the Welcome to Night Vale podcast. In fact, I think Who's a Good Boy is the fourth year, and that is pretty much where my intense interest in, in the podcast kind of ended. This is the, the high note where I kind of stopped listening to the episodes regularly. But I love these script books. They have been so wonderfully put together. And if they ever put out any more, I will probably get back into the podcast, re-listen to episodes, and reread the scripts and all of that. So these are great. 
Then there is a book that I skipped because I don't intend to continue with the series, and that is The Red Stained Wings by Elizabeth Bear. This is the second book in her fantasy series, The Lotus Kingdoms, which is set in the same world as her other fantasy series that I quite liked, but a different time period. I tried to read the first book, um, The Stone and the Skull, and ultimately DNF'd it because I just couldn't get into it. It was just not grabbing my attention. So I decided to not continue on with the series and I didn't try to read the second book either. Um, I have been loving Elizabeth Bear's science fiction. Her white space novels have been wonderful. Those are Ancestral Night and Machine. So I'm mostly focusing on the science fiction that she writes now rather than her fantasy, but yeah. I think that basically this series has got some real slow burn writing and it just didn't work for me. I love Jo Walton as an author, particularly because all of her books manage to be very interesting and incredibly different from each other. Though right now I feel like she's kind of on this philosophical, um, theological, Florentine history kick or something, um, which is Lent, you know? <laughs> so this is her novel that came out in 2019, and I don't think I could possibly quickly summarize what this is about, but mostly it's, it's like historical fiction, alternate history, spec fic, with healthy doses of theology as well. This book follows Girolamo Savonarola as he basically relives his life over and over again in, I think, an attempt to harrow hell. Harrowing hell is like a theological thing that I had never heard of before I read this book. So Yes, um, it, it, Savonarola was a real person, but this is a completely fictional imagining of his life where um, he, he's playing a very different role within, I guess, the, the Roman Catholic Church and everything. It, it's really interesting, and, and I say that as somebody who doesn't know enough about these concepts or this history to probably grasp everything that Walton is talking about and referencing and using. It managed to still be a very interesting story without understanding everything, I guess. Um, and I was surprised at how much it gripped me by the end when it just went in a completely different direction from what I expected. So Walton never disappoints with her interesting ideas, that's for sure. Then we're going to get into some books that I haven't read or I don't have that many thoughts about two years later. Um, so we have The Deep by Rivers Solomon. This is based on a song by Clipping, and I was really looking forward to it because it was such an interesting concept for a story. Um, it's, it's basically about um, the transatlantic slave trade, um, slaves who were thrown overboard, um, the, the myth that they become like mermaids. So it's, it's set in this like mermaid society and follows a character whose role in their society is basically to remember their horrible, difficult history so that the others don't have to. And it's a really great idea. I did like it, but I didn't come away with many thoughts on it, actually. Um, I think it may just not have been for me. In fact, this may be my first hint that I don't particularly care about mermaid type stories. There's so much more going on in the deep than just that, of course, but um, I was actually surprised that I wasn't as invested in it, that I didn't have as strong feelings about it as a lot of other people did. One that I haven't read is Unraveling by Karen Lord. I still very much want to read this. I'm constantly kicking myself for not reading more of Karen Lord's books because I should. I think I'll really enjoy them. Um, but Unraveling in particular I haven't read because I haven't had access to it at the library and I kind of keep forgetting about it, so I should just interlibrary loan that. <laughs> 
off on a completely different direction. We have a nonfiction book, Hacking the Code of Life, How Gene Editing Will Rewrite Our Futures by Anessa Carey. I have really enjoyed Anessa Carey's other nonfiction books on genetics. Um, I felt like she's had a much more like technical, complex, deep dive look into the field of genetics in the past, and I really enjoy that. Hacking the Code of Life is her quite short book about um, the recent advances in gene editing with CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Um, so this came out obviously in 2019, and I can say already that it's it's probably a bit dated. There are already things that have happened with that, uh, the you know the real world use of CRISPR-Cas9 that this book doesn't talk about. So I think it was actually a good introduction to what CRISPR is. Um, it, it was a very easy read, and I would recommend it for people who are new to this topic. Um, but it surprisingly wasn't as technical as I expected from Carrie. So I still liked it, but um, I think I get more out of her other books on the topic. The Lesson by Cadwell Turnbull. This was an interesting debut novel about kind of, I don't know exactly, an alien invasion or just a very odd alien contact in, I believe, the Virgin Islands. I thought the setting of the story was really awesome. I remember very little else about it, unfortunately. Um, what I do remember is that I came away from it thinking, wow, this was a good debut novel and I really need to read more by Turnbull in the future. I know that he's got his second novel coming out later in 2021 and I will definitely be reading that. Um, but yeah, not a lot of thoughts on this particular one. I liked it. It wasn't extremely amazing, but it was enough to get me to pay attention to Turnbull's writing career now. Broken Places and Outer Spaces by Nnedi Okorafor. This is a short book based on a sort of autobiographical TED talk that uh, Okorafor gave. It's about, I think, essentially overcoming adversity and how she became a writer. Um, she had scoliosis, like most of her siblings, as a child, and her surgery to correct that left her unable to walk, and she had a lot to overcome after that event, and that's when she started writing a lot. Um, I really enjoyed learning more about Okorafor because I've been reading her books for years now, and I just didn't know very much about her as a person, so this was interesting. Um, it, was a, it was a good read, not one that I think I would ever return to because I, I got what I needed to out of it. Oh. Whoops, I accidentally skipped a book. So, uh, Children of Ruin by Adrian Tchaikovsky. <laughs> Y'all know I loved this book. I really, really loved Children of Time, and Children of Ruin picks up after that, and it's it's one of Tchaikovsky's big, chunky sci-fi novels. I adore them. This is one that I did do a review video on, and I will link that, because once again, much fresher thoughts on it in that video. Um, but this just continued a lot of the stuff that I loved from the first book about evolution and biology and um, a non-human species that become spacefaring. It's fantastic. Empress of Forever by Max Gladstone. This one, unfortunately, was a real disappointment. I was really looking forward to it because I've loved Gladstone's other books. I've really enjoyed his style, and I thought this was going to be a really fun, fun like, romp, I guess. I, it was uh, compared a lot to Guardians of the Galaxy. And I had to DNF it. I tried reading this book twice. I tried reading it in print, and then I tried listening to the audiobook. I never got very far into it. I found the main character, this woman, to just be kind of boring and insufferable and too perfect at everything. And I didn't care enough about what was going on to actually get past the setup and into the real plot. So possibly this is one that would have been like really like picked up after the, the first couple of chapters, and I would have been interested in it at that point, but I didn't care enough. So sadly, not going to come back to this one. And then the last one is another fantastic one, Hex Arcade Stories by Yoon Ha Lee. I describe this collection as, as basically Yoon Ha Lee's fan fiction of his own character, Jadao. <laughs> This is definitely a great collection to read if you've loved the Machineries of Empire series that started with Nine Fox Gambit, and also if you really liked the character of Jadao. So many of the stories in this, ranging from flash fiction to short stories to even a full-length novella, are about 
Jadal. Um, I thought it was great, and I particularly enjoyed the um, the novella Glass Cannon, which kind of serves as a fourth installment in the Machineries of Empire series. I thought it was great, and it really added something to that series. Um, it kind of made me rethink a bit how I thought about Rev Revenant Guns ending. So yeah, very enjoyable. Not the place to jump in if you are interested in Yoon Holly's fiction, though. I think this is best read if you're really already invested in the Hexarchate itself, in the Machineries of Empire world. Um, it probably won't make a lot of sense, actually, if you haven't read those things before. So that is it for these books from April, May, and June of 2019. Like I said before, it's kind of a mixed bunch, uh, but there are a number of things in this that I really enjoyed and a couple that turned out to be favorites of the year for me, so I call that good. Um, let me know if you have also read any of these. Leave me your comments and thoughts down below. Thank you as always for watching, and I will be back again soon with another video. And until then, bye. Oh yes, if you're wondering what my t-shirt says, my parents gave it to me and I promised I would show it in a video. So it says, that's what I do. I read books, I knit, and I know things. This is a perfect summary of my life.